When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Before I start talking a bit more about the difference between alkanol and alkanoic acid function groups, I quickly want to go over again what an alkane actually is, what the difference between alkanes, alkanols, and alkanoic acids are, and then we'll go over the actual difference between the function groups of alkanols and alkanoic acids. So you've got your alkanol here, uh, sorry, your alkane here, and then alkane means is there are pure hydrocarbons. So within that chain, we only have hydrocarbons. So if you look at these here, these are all your different types of alkanes. And you can see it's only carbon and hydrogen. It's, and the actual formula for it is CnH2n plus 2, which means that for every carbon we have two hydrogens and then plus 2 at the end as well. And that's your alkane. And your alkanol is a bit different. Your alkanol is very similar in terms of structure, but there is one difference, which is the hydroxide group at the end. That's the, al the alcohol group. Now here we have, a, this is just an example, this would be butanol, and in this case we have four carbons, that's why it's called but, and we have this hydroxide group, which makes an alcohol, therefore it's butanol, and this is its functional group, so this is the functional group of your alkanols, it's your hydroxide group. Whereas with your alkanoic acid, this is the formula for alkanoic acids, C CnH2n plus 1, and this is the actual functional group. This is a carboxyl acid group, or carboxyl acid group, or it's, it's basically carbonic acid, but we call it the carboxyl acid group. And this is the carboxyl acid. If it's by itself, we call it the carbonic acid. And what we have to do for this video, we'll, we'll cover the actual point. It says describe the differences between the alkanol and the alkanoic acid function groups in carbon compounds. So these are the ones we have to talk about. The hydroxide group and the carboxyl acid group and why they're different, what makes them different. So again, don't need to know about alkanes for this top point, but just know that alkanes are that basic hydrocarbon chain. So they have no real functional group. Every part of an alkane has just carbon and hydrogen. Whereas with alkanols and alkanoic acids, it's similar, but they do have this special part to it which makes it the functional group. It's what gives it its function. Now, if we look at the functional groups again, we have our hydroxide group, which we call our alcohol groups. So that's here, alcohol. And the alcohol itself is just a hydroxide. And on the flip side, we have this carbonic acid group, or the carboxyl acid group, which is a carbonic acid. So this is our carbonic acid. And carbonic acid is just your carbon, and to the carbon itself, we have a double bond with one of the oxygens, and we also have a hydroxide group of the other one. All right, so overall, it's we could just say COOH. One of the O's is the double bond, whereas the other OH comes from this group here. Now, what so we have to describe the difference. What I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about the similarities and differences. But I'm going to highlight the differences just so you know for the top point which are the differences. Both of them are polar compounds. What that means is they have an uneven charge. So some part of it will be a bit more positive and some part will be a bit more negative. In this case, we, because the OH group, we have the electrons being attracted a bit more to the oxygen. So the electrons of the hydrogen will be pulled a bit more to the oxygen, which means that the hydrogen group here will be positively charged. And that's what that means. A polar compound has one part which is positive charged, the other will be a bit more negative charged. Whereas on the opposite side, here we have the actual the oxygen will attract the electrons a bit more to itself and thereby this oxygen is negatively charged. And here we've got that same hydroxide group. Again, the, hide, the electrons will be sh closer to the oxygen which means the hydrogen itself is positively charged. And because we have these positive negative charges, what that means is it will form hydrogen bonds. And I'll just draw a quick water molecule. I've got an O, and I've got two H's coming off. The oxygen itself has a bit of a negative charge, and the actual 
hydrogens have a bit of a positive charge. And there can be now because there can be hydrogen bonding between these chains. So for example, the O, the negative part of the O, so that top part here, can attach to the positive part of the hydrogen and form hydrogen bonds. So that's what a hydrogen bond is between a very electronegative atom, such as the oxygen, and in a very non-electronegative atom, such as hydrogen. So it's hydrogen with either oxygen, fluorine, or chlorine. And in this case, it's with oxygen with hydrogen. And that's your hydrogen bonds. So they can both form hydrogen bonds. Both the alkanol functional groups can form hydrogen bonds, and so can the alkanoic acid functional groups. And the reason why is this water molecule in the top part is negatively charged. That's where we can have a hydrogen bond between the positive hydrogen and negative oxygen. There can be that bond here. And the bottom is a bit positive charged. That's where we can have negative of the oxygen attaching to the positive of the hydrogen, thereby making a hydrogen bond. And so in this case, we have hydrogen bonding occurring both for the alkanol function groups and the alkanoic acid function groups. Now they're also both water soluble, which means they dissolve in water. So they dissolve in water. Again, because the reason why is because they can form these hydrogen bonds. And that makes it soluble in water. And they both can do this. So they're both soluble in water. Now they both have higher melting and boiling points in water itself. Something that increases your melting and boiling point are your amounts of hydrogen bonds. So hydrogen bonds is one of them. So hydrogen bonds increases your boiling point. But another one is the length of your chain. So chain length is another one. Now in this case, our water molecule can do hydrogen bonds. So can our alkanoic functional group, and so can our alkanoic acid functional group. But the chain length for water is very small, whereas for alkanol functional groups and alkanoic acid functional groups, as we can see here, they can be quite long. So that gives them dispersion forces, and we're actually going to go cover that more in the next video. That gives it dispersion forces plus the hydrogen bonds, which means overall we have stronger bonds, which means the health, the melting and boiling point are higher. So we both have a higher melting and boiling point than water for both of them. There are, the, one of the difference is that there's no change in pH for the alkanol functional group. This hydrogen sticks to the actual function group. So this won't leave. This hydrogen sticks. It's just going to be stay attached to the actual oxygen. Right? So high, if the hydrogen were to leave, that might mean we have an increase in, in hydrogen concentration, ion concentration, and that would increase the pH, or decrease, sorry, that would decrease the pH. In this case, there's no change because it stays on the actual structure, which means the alcohol itself is neutral. Whereas there's a difference, again, the difference with alkanol and alkanoic acid is with the alkanoic acid, we can have the hydrogen actually leaving. This can leave into solution. And when it does leave, that means it can lower the pH because there's more hydrogen ions in solution when it does leave. And that can cause it to be slightly acidic. So overall, I've mentioned one ma major difference. So this is a difference. We have a neutral function group for alkanoic functional groups and a slightly acidic functional group for the alkanoic acid functional groups. But there's also a bit of a difference when it comes to melting points. Even though they're both higher than water, there is a bit of a difference. And the reason why is you can see here we can have one hydrogen bond, right? You can have one hydrogen bond between the negative and the positive, And you can actually have two hydrogen bonds, one here between negative and positive, and one more down here. So hydrogen bonds makes things have an increased boiling point and melting point, and an alkanoic acid can have two, whereas the alkanol function group can only have one. And thereby, you're going to see a slightly higher melting and boiling point for your alkanoic acids. We'll cover that in the next video as well, so don't worry. But those were the main differences, right? So a slightly higher melting and boiling point for alkanoic acids, and alkanoic acid function groups can lower the pH. That's different as well. But you should also be able to know, know you should be able to spot these functional groups. If you have a test and you see both these groups, you should be able to tell which one is the, the alcohol, alkanoic function group, which one is the alkanoic acid functional group. But that's the main gist for this video, but hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.